Hey everyone, so before I get started with the tutorial, I wanted to let you know about another giveaway I'm holding. Today it's a backlit Astra series keyboard from Logic Keyboard. Now this keyboard is really amazing. It's color coded, categorized, keyboard shortcuts, really great backlit. All you need to do to be eligible is to like the video and subscribe to the channel and then leave a comment letting us know what your favorite After Effects tip, trick, or shortcut is. Also, be sure to go over to my new Facebook page that I just created and give me a like. Right now I have zero friends, zero likes, so I need some friends, so help me out. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so let's get started with the tips here. To help me, I have my French friend here, Jean-Pierre, and Right away, if you look at our project, I have a five second clip of my layer here, my little French guy, and I want to have my composition to actually be five seconds. So this is our first tip is IBON, I-B-O-N. This is actually a combination of a few shortcuts. So if I wanted this composition to be exactly five seconds, I could go up to the composition settings and kind of manually type it in and resize it, but there's a quicker way. All I need to do is select this layer because it's five seconds in length, and now as I press these shortcuts, I, B, O, N, it automatically trims my work area straight around my clip. When I press the I key, it'll take me to the end point of the layer. When I press the B key, it trims to my playhead. When I press the O key, it takes me to the out point of my layer. And then when I press the N key, it trims to that point. Now I can simply control or right click on the work area bar and select trim comp to work area. And now boom, my composition is five seconds in length. Another great shortcut is the My Maximize Panel shortcut key, which is the Accent Grave key. So any panel that I'm mousing over, if I press this shortcut key, it will automatically maximize that panel to full screen, which is very, very helpful. You can also zoom in and out on your composition. I used to always use the Command or Control plus and minus keys, but there is even a shorter way to do this, which is just using the comma and period comma will zoom out and period will zoom in. You can also zoom in to single frame units on your timeline. When you're working in complex projects or with keyframes, this can be very helpful. So right now, I'm zoomed all the way out. We can see this is five seconds in length here. And I, if I go ahead and press the semicolon key, it's gonna take us to individual units. So you can see here, one frame, two frame, three frame. And as I move here, I'm moving one frame at a time. Now, if we're working this closely, you can quickly get lost. So if, let's say I'm way over here and I don't know where my playhead is, I can scroll immediately to the current time in the timeline by pressing the D key. So I'm gonna press the D key. It's gonna take us immediately and center that playhead right in our timeline. So let's say next we wanna take Jean-Pierre and put him in the center of our composition panel. So to do that, I'm gonna zoom out here. I'm gonna grab the layer and then choose layer transform, center, and view, or I can select command home or control home. Okay, so now you see he's in the center. So how did it place him in the center? Well, it placed him in the center based on his anchor point, and the anchor point is located here. So what exactly is an anchor point? Well, if you change any of your attributes, or you add any keyframes, it's going to affect your layer based on where your anchor point is. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I go to rotate, it's gonna rotate around the anchor point here. So how do I move this anchor point? Well, there's a tool up here called the pan behind tool, also known as the anchor point tool. And I can press Y to select that. And now I can grab this and move it around to wherever I want it. So let's say we want to rotate and move our guy right at the bottom of his feet. I can move the anchor point down here. Now when I rotate, he's going to rotate on his feet here. Also, when you're using the pan behind tool, if you hold the command or control key, it's going to automatically snap your anchor point to a variety of different points here, which is really helpful. It'll snap it to the X and Y axes. It'll snap it to the outside of your layer here. So if you want some precision, you can just hold this shortcut key, it's very helpful. Also, if you wanna quickly center this anchor point back in the middle of your layer content, you can do that by going to Layer, Transform, Center Anchor Point in Layer Content, or you can use this kind of lengthy shortcut here, which is Alt Command Home. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that. Now you see our anchor point is right smack dab in the middle of our layer content, very helpful. Okay, let's say we wanna give Jean-Pierre here some kids. We can do that by duplicating this layer. You can duplicate a layer by holding Command or Control and pressing D. Now you'll see there's an additional layer here that was just duplicated. Now I can simply move this over and scale it down. And now Jean-Pierre has a kid here. 
Let's let's duplicate it again, give them two kids, two little mini Jean Pierre's. So now that I have a little family here, I'm gonna use parenting to have my child layers kind of replicate what the father is doing. So to do that, first I'm gonna rename my father layer so I can see which layer is the parent. Then I can go over here and you'll see there's a parent column. Now there's two ways I can parent these layers. First I can grab the pick whip of one of the child layers and select the father layer. Now you look here, this is the parent layer. So, or I can just kind of manually drag or, or manually select that on the drop down menu. Now these two layers are parented to this layer. Now any kind of attributes or anything I change on this layer is gonna automatically also affect those child layers. So that is parenting. You can also split a clip. If I wanted to go over here to one of the child layers and split one of these clips, it's the same as duplicate, only that you hold the shift key. So I'm gonna hold command or control and then hold shift and D. And now you'll see it splits that clip as, comp as a compared to duplicating it. Now when working in After Effects, you're gonna obviously be working with a lot of effects. So this means you'll be working the effect controls panel. So to quickly bring up the effect controls panel for any particular layer, you can simply select that layer and then press the F3 key and it's automatically gonna launch the effect controls panel, whether that panel was open previously or not. And you can actually press F3 again to close it. And again, it's for any layer that you select. So this is quite helpful. Now when you start to work with keyframes, you can quickly get confused and lost and not know which property has keyframes on it. So to quickly see keyframes on a particular layer, select that layer and then press the U key. And then automatically only the properties that have keyframes applied will show up. Now another tip is if I have no layers selected and I just press the U key with my panel or my timeline panel selected, it's going to show us all the properties for every layer that have keyframes applied. Now when working with keyframes, you can quickly change the interpolation of a keyframe by selecting a keyframe and then pressing the F9 key. And that'll automatically add an easy ease to this. Or you can zoom in and just hold the command or control key and then click on a particular keyframe and then it's gonna cycle between the different interpolations here and also add an easy ease to that particular keyframe. If you look down here, there's a toggle switches and modes button. And as I click between here where it's showing us a different kind of layout and it's showing us different options and tools on our timeline panel here. To quickly do this with a keyboard shortcut, press the F4 key and this will automatically switch between those. Also, you can customize what metadata or which columns show up by simply control or right clicking on the column here. And then there'll be a column section. Now you can just check or uncheck whatever you want to display in these columns, which is really, really handy. You can set up numbered markers by positioning your playhead where you want and then holding shift and then pressing any number from zero through nine. And as you press those numbers while holding the shift key, it's gonna add those numbered markers. So if you're new to keyframing and you don't exactly know how to animate certain things, you can utilize animation presets. So if I wanted to have an animation applied or some kind of effect applied to one of my layers here, say this child, I could select the layer, go to animation, browse presets, and that's gonna launch a program called Adobe Bridge, which is gonna show us all these different presets. I can apply them by simply double clicking on a desired preset, and it'll automatically apply that preset to my layer. You can group or nest similar layers in Adobe After Effects. Let's say for instance, I wanna take these children and put them in their own composition. I'll select the two child layers, Go to Layer, Precompose, and then I'll add a name here to my composition. And now I have an all new composition that I can open up and that is available here in the project panel. If you start using nested compositions and pre-compositions, things can get pretty confusing. So to help you have a bird's eye view of your project, use the flow chart. If you press the tab key, that brings up the mini flow chart, and it's showing us right here that our children composition is nested inside of our Jean-Pierre composition. So I can actually navigate by clicking straight within the mini flowchart here. If you have a really complex project, you can use this flowchart button here, which shows you the entire project. So earlier I showed you how to parent layers. We parented our two child layers to our father layer, but our father doesn't have a parent. So how can we create something to control this layer? Well, to do that, I can create a null object. I'm gonna right or control click here and select new null object and now I can control my father layer with this null object by parenting the father to the null object. Now if I move this null object, it's going to move our father layer. 
So let's say we're working on another sequence here where Jean-Pierre takes a trip to Paris and he meets a lovely lady. Now we want to capture this moment and save it. So we could do that with snapshot. So I can take a snapshot of our current frame in the composition panel by holding the shift key and pressing any of the keys F5 through F8. So I'm, I can take four different snapshots. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one by pressing the F5 key, shift F5. You can hear the noise there. It, uh, it took a snapshot there. Now if I go back and I'm working with uh, Jean-Pierre and his children here, let's say he wants to show his children this nice picture of this lady he met in Paris. So now I can simply press the F5 key and as I hold it, it's showing me that snapshot. So this is a great way to compare two different kind of snapshots that you're working on to compare and contrast. So now let's say that Jean-Pierre broke up with this lady and he wants to purge all the memories of this woman. So to do that, we can go to Edit, Purge, and you can see down here, Purge Snapshots. So that's get rid of any trouble, get rid of any memory. But essentially what you're doing here is you can, you can do all memory in disk cache. If you're having any problems with the program, if you're crashing, or if you're ha having any issues, this can really help to resolve any kind of problems. Last but certainly not least is the keyboard shortcut map, which is new to After Effects. And since I've been talking about so many shortcuts, we really needed to include this. So if you go to Edit Keyboard Shortcuts, you'll see the all new keyboard shortcuts map, which is really great. You can search any kind of keyboard shortcuts. You can save them. You can change them. You can quickly reference modifier key shortcuts by simply pressing those modifier keys and it's just a really great layout to look at keyboards. It's vastly superior to the previous layout. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you wanna be eligible for the free Astra backlit keyboard from Logic Keyboard giveaway, be sure to leave a comment on this video letting us know your favorite After Effects tip, trick, or shortcut. Be sure to like the video, and also go over to the Facebook page at Boone Loves Video and give us a like. I just created this Facebook page. It's brand spanking new. At the time of this recording, I currently have zero followers, zero likes, so be sure to go over there and give me some love. All right, I'll see you next time.